Hello, future Pumas. This is Mrs. Terenzi. I'm the principal of Plymouth Scholars. Welcome to our Young Fives and Kindergarten Open House tonight. So I wanted to share a little bit about myself. I am Sabrina Terenzi. I've been the principal here at Plymouth Scholars Charter Academy for the past two years. Although I am celebrating my 21st year with National Heritage Academies. I started by opening Canton Charter Academy in 2000 as a first and second grade teacher. I was there for nine years and then I moved over to Achieve Charter Academy to open um, Achieve as a K2 Dean and I was there for five years. Then from there, I moved to South Canton Scholars as the principal and I was there for five years and now I'm at Plymouth Scholars. So I've been with NHA for quite a bit and, and all the different Canton area schools. So just a little bit about me personally, I attended the University of Michigan, Go Blue, for my undergraduate degree and Wayne State University for my master's in education. I've been married to my husband, Danny, for 20 years, and we have boy-girl twins that are 13 years old and a Cocker Spaniel named Charlie. In our free time, we love to vacation. It's our number one thing we love to do, and we love to be on the water. Um, I also love to read and just spend time with family and friends. Today, you will meet uh, several of our Plymouth Scholar staff. Um, up after me will be Megan Dizik, who is the Dean of Kindergarten First Grade English Language Learners and Special Education. And then you will meet our four teachers. Uh, Stacy Wright is our Young Fives teacher. Debbie Bargo is our kindergarten teacher. Lindsay Cliff is another kindergarten teacher. And Grace Gamash is our final kindergarten teacher. They're excited to speak to you. This is an overview of what you'll be learning about today. I will be talking to you about NHA's model and speaking about the four pillars. Before I get started, I wanted to share with you that Plymouth Scholars is a Bay Mills Community College charter school. That means that Bay Mills Community College sponsors Plymouth Scholars and um, we really appreciate them. We are managed by National Heritage Academies. And this is a picture of our leadership team. From left to right, we have Ms. Dizik, the kindergarten and first grade dean, Ms. Garner, which is the second through fifth grade dean, myself, and then Mr. Shadler, who is the middle school dean. We're excited you're considering Plymouth Scholars. So National Heritage Academies has built their educational model on four pillars, and I'm going to speak to you about each of them today. The first pillar is academic excellence. Academic excellence means that our teachers are trained to make sure that children are given work at differentiated levels so that we are challenging each student to achieve. And we do that by giving high level questions to our students. We do a lot of small group instruction where students are learning at their level, whether it be a reteach opportunity, an extension opportunity, or on target. Students get choice in what they are exploring for their academic um, progress. Again, they have differentiated activities and stations. We make sure that we teach with a variety of different approaches. Um, in our Young Fives in Kindergarten, we have a lot of hands-on learning, auditory opportunities, um, as well as movement opportunities. And we allow for our students to work in groups and work individually. So throughout all that, we make sure that students have high accountability and high academic excellence. Our second pillar is that we are a moral focused school. Each month, NHA has an NHA curriculum based off our moral focused virtues and our teachers teach those virtues in their classroom. For example, in September, our scholars learn about wisdom. In October, we move to respect. In November, we learn about gratitude. In December, we learn about self-control. So every month there's a different moral focus. We have lessons that correlate to that moral focus that the teachers teach two to three times a week. In addition, uh, during our moral focus assemblies every Friday, uh, we have different speakers that come in once a month to speak about the moral focus virtue. We also celebrate students at our building by doing a student of the month assembly one time a month. Teachers choose one student in their classroom who portrays the moral focus virtue of the month. 
For example, if you are in the month of March, the moral focus virtue is encouragement. A teacher will recognize a student in their classroom that is encouraging to their peers and their teachers. Our third pillar is parental partnerships. We believe that parents are essential for our learning community. We make sure that we give lots of opportunities for parents to know about their academic progress of their students, as well as have constant communication with the teachers. We do this by having a parent portal where you can check your child's grades to see how they're doing in class. We, can, we also send out a weekly newsletter. Each teacher sends out a newsletter explaining what the objectives the students learn, learned that week, as well as upcoming events. The teacher responds to emails within 24 to 48 hours. We also have daily behavior tracking. If your student um, is doing well in class, your teacher will inform you of that. If they are struggling, they'll inform you of that. So we are constantly in communication about what's happening in our school day. We also encourage all parents to volunteer. Lots of parents choose to come in for lunch or recess or help run a small group during instruction, we welcome you to come in and be part of your child's learning progress. We also have student-led conferences two times a year, in the fall and in the spring. During that time, students and yourself will be invited to conferences to hear about all the progress they've made. And finally, we do have parent satisfaction surveys twice a year after conferences. We send out a survey to see how you're feeling about Plymouth Scholars. We encourage you to please reach out, regardless of if it's an affirmation or an area of concern or just a regular question, we want to be walking hand in hand with you through this educational journey. Our last pillar is about student accountability. And I don't have a slide for this, but we, during all of these different things I just spoke about, our utmost important one is that students are accountable for their learning. They come into our school knowing they are college ready and college bound. And so we ensure that we are in school all day teaching them morals and great educational concepts so that they can be the best citizens they can be. So thank you for choosing Plymouth Scholars. I'm now going to pass you to our Dean, Miss Diesel. Hi everyone, my name is Megan Dizek. I am the Young 5 through 1st grade EL and Special Education Dean at Plymouth Scholars. I started my career teaching 1st grade for six years, and then I was an academic specialist for two. I attended Michigan State University for both my undergrad and graduate degrees. When I'm not cheering on my Spartans, I like to spend time with my family and friends, be outdoors, exercise, and read. In this presentation, I will be talking to you about some of our school expectations and policies. The main priority at Plymouth Scholars is to ensure the safety of all of our students. All doors lock at 815 right after arrival, and then anyone who enters the building needs to do that through the front office. We have a safety system called Raptor, which requires volunteers to sign in with their license and print a visitor badge so that we know who is in our building. Additionally, we have cameras in common areas and practice fire, tornado, and lockdown drills so that all of our students know what to do in case of an emergency. Attendance is very important to your student's learning. Please make sure that your student is at school on time each day. If your student is going to be absent, please call the office by 8.30 in the morning. Tardies will begin after arrival at 8.15. At this time, students will have to be signed in through the office. Please refer to our parent and student handbook for more information about absences and tardies. A fl flexible and cost-effective dress code has been established at our school to encourage academic success while reducing distractions. The school dress code for kindergartners is a bright green, gray, or white polo with navy bottoms. Uniforms can be purchased through Image Builders Marketing. You will be receiving an order form in your registration materials. One of our school-wide expectations is the use of a behavior system. Teachers and staff members focus on building a classroom community in which students feel welcomed, safe, and comfortable. They do this by creating classroom rules and procedures together and incorporating team building activities throughout the year. Of course, we know that sometimes students need some redirection and that is why the same behavior system is implemented throughout the whole school. Students start their day on green and move through yellow, blue, and red based on the amount of warnings that are given. We communicate with families about each student's behavior and use strategies to make sure that behavior does not impact the learning environment.
You may be wondering if your student should enter young fives or, or kindergarten. Here are some factors that may help that decision. However, please note that these are just sample guidelines. If you have any questions about registration, please contact Ms. Stizik, Mrs. Terenzi, or Ms. Gillespie in the office. Up next, I want to introduce our Young Fives teacher, Mrs. Wright. Hello, my name is Stacy Wright and I am the Young Fives teacher. I have been teaching since 2006 and have taught both first grade and now Young Fives. I attended Eastern Michigan University where I received a bachelor's in elementary education and then a master's in early childhood. I love dogs and have two of them, Oakley and Ziggy. They keep me busy and active. I also have one daughter named Lola and I'm married to my husband, Jeff. I love coffee, crafting, shopping, reading, and riding my bike. I am looking forward to hearing more about you soon. Here at Plymouth Scholars, Young Fives and Kindergarten are a full day. Our day begins at 8.15 a.m. and ends at 3.15 p.m. In the morning, both grades focus on English Language Arts, or ELA. During this time, we focus on things such as read-alouds, phonics, comprehension, and writing. After our daily lesson, we would move into our ELA workshop block. During this time, the students work independently on hands-on activities while the teacher and paraprofessional would pull small groups. We would then transition into our specials classes for 40 minutes. These rotate throughout the week and include art, music, gym, and technology. We would then have a recess and a lunch. The students have the option to pack a lunch or receive a school lunch every single day. In the afternoon, our focus switches to math, science, and social studies. In math, we focus on basic math skills and strategies, including numbers, measurement, geometry, number sense, and graphing. We would then lead into a math workshop where again the kids would play hands-on games and activities based on what was taught while the teacher and para pull small groups. We also have moral focus lessons which introduces a new moral focus virtue each month. The teachers will teach students about these virtues and complete activities to go with them. We end our day with science and social studies. During this time we might learn about animals, space, our country, community helpers, weather, and maps. Very last, we end our day with a recess. Young Fives is specific to pacing and the growth of young students. We spend more time on topics and move at a slower pace than kindergarten. We allow for more frequent movement breaks and all lessons are mini lessons ranging from 10 to 15 minutes at a time. It's an excellent program for students who may be ready for school and need structure, but not the rigor that comes with kindergarten. It gives them an extra year to adjust socially, academically, and emotionally. The Young Five students will move to kindergarten with an increased knowledge of basic skills, sharing, problem solving, confidence, independence, routines, and most importantly, an, an overall solid foundation. Basic skills in Young Fives is a major focus to prepare the students for kindergarten and beyond. We focus a lot on fine motor skills, such as putting on clothes, tying shoes, zipping. We also work on pencil grip and scissor grip. We work on cutting, coloring within the lines, and grip strength and control. We also work a lot on self-awareness. We recognize our first and last name. We can state our age and birthday. We work on naming body parts, colors, and shapes. We work on writing our first and last name and knowing the names of classmates and school staff. In the classroom, there is an emphasis on increased tension span, class routines, interacting with our peers, following directions, taking care of belongings, and completing assignments. We also focus on doing our best work and participating. In English language arts, we will learn about writing the letters of the alphabet, both lowercase and capital, creating small words and creating sentences. We work on letter sounds and blending words together. We work on sight words, reading comprehension, rhyming, beginning and ending sounds, and understanding and using questions. We also work on expanding our vocabulary and writing in our journal. In math, we focus on counting by ones, fives, and tens. We can write our numbers zero through 20 and complete basic addition and basic subtraction problems up to 10. We work on shapes, both 2D and 3D. We complete patterns and sequencing and identifying numbers zero through 20. We work on more, than more and less, sorting, 
point identification, and we even create and build shapes. In science and social studies, we take a more hands-on approach. In science, we will talk about animals, plants, use our five senses to investigate pumpkins, and we make observations and gather information. In social studies, we talk a lot about our families, about ourselves, where we live, the members of our family, and our name. In our school, we talk about people who work there and jobs within the school. We also have a big focus on community helpers, where we will talk to police officers and firefighters, and they even get to visit our school. We will also talk about animal habitats, maps, and jobs. I would now like to introduce one of our kindergarten teachers, Miss Cliff. Hi, my name is Miss Cliff, and I'm a kindergarten teacher here at Plymouth Scholars. I have been teaching since 2009, including time spent in preschool, pre-kindergarten, and young fives, but most of my experience has been teaching kindergarten. I graduated from Western Michigan with my bachelor's in 2008 and am currently in the process of it, obtaining my master's in reading and literacy from Central Michigan. I have a dog named Namira who is an Alaskan Malmute and I love spending time with my family and friends. I'm pictured here with my nephew Keegan at his first birthday party. I love spending time near the water, whether that is swimming, paddle boating, or kayaking, and I also enjoy golfing. I'd now like to talk to you about Kindergarten ELA. In Kindergarten ELA, which is English and Language Arts, we focus on a variety of skills. We begin each day with a read aloud that covers various themes focused on specific comprehension skills. For example, identifying problem and solution, who the main characters are, what the setting is in the story, or retelling the beginning, middle, and end of the story. Our main focus at the beginning of the school year is identifying letter names and sounds. As the school year progresses, we will begin building words and identifying sight words. Students will have a strong understanding of phonics and the ability to read and write sight words by the end of the school year as they practice writing sentences on their own using strategies they have learned. We incorporate daily writing into our schedule in order to provide opportunities for students to practice these skills as well as the opportunity to be creative. We recognize the academic needs of each student and tailor instruction to each individual skill level. Each teacher provides small group instruction to their students during workshop time. Students will be responsible for working on skills independently while the teacher pulls a small group of students to a table and works on activities based on their reading and writing level. These activities include phonics, writing and building words, and reading leveled text. Our goal for the end of the school year is for students to be independent readers and writers. I'd now like to introduce you to Mrs. Bargo. Hi, I'm Mrs. Bargo. I've been teaching since 1988. I have taught preschool all the way through to eighth grade, but my passion is in early childhood. I hold a bachelor's degree in elementary education and a master's degree in curriculum and instruction. My daughter Liz is in college with a, with a focus in international studies. I also have a dog named Wicked and a cat named Julie. I enjoy spending time with my family at our cottage in Houghton Lake. I love boating, fishing, relaxing by the fire. So I'm going to talk about kindergarten math. The math program we utilize is called Bridges. This is where we use guided math lessons to ensure mastery. The curriculum takes a hands-on approach to learning through workshops. We also use many games to teach areas like counting and naming numbers, adding and subtracting, Identifying attributes of 2D and 3D shapes. Measure by using different units. We read and create graphs and develop the understanding of place value. We also use math stories to help students master the vocabulary of adding and subtracting numbers to 20. This is done by discussing the problem as a whole class, then students are taught different strategies to solve complex math problems.
Then students are given time daily during math workshop to practice strategies that they have learned through games and manipulatives to achieve individual goals. Now I'd like to introduce to you Mrs. Grace Gamash. Hello, I am Grace Gamash. I have been at Plymouth Scholars Charter Academy since November of 2019. Previously, I was a kindergarten para at Plymouth Scholars and Canton Charter. I graduated in 2014 from Olivet Nazarene University in Illinois. I am married to my husband, Ron, and we have two kids named Addison and Landon. We also have a Black Lab mix that we rescued, a Black Lab mix dog named Layla. And I enjoy watching movies, going to Higgins Lake in the summer, and having game nights with my friends. I will be talking to you today about kindergarten science and social studies. First up is kindergarten science. In science, we focus on a variety of topics which are explored through inquiry, research, and hands-on group work. The units covered include topics such as understanding the properties of force and motion, weather patterns, how sunlight affects the earth, and how the uh, relationship between humans, plants, and animals and their environments. There is a large focus on making predictions, observations, and recording results of experiments as we dive into the scientific process through hands-on experiences. For kindergarten social studies, we focus heavily on learning what it means to be a good citizen, why rules are important, and how they keep people safe. We also explore what a democracy is and how to participate in making group decisions through voting. And we explore what we know about our surrounding communities and where we are located on the map in relation to other states, countries, and continents. In social studies, we also cover components of history, including past, present, and future. Students participate participate in fun projects to investigate the concepts we are learning to make meaningful connections, such as creating a timeline of their own life, and there's a picture of an example on the bottom right-hand corner, or my personal favorite, writing letters to people that live all around the world through our Flat Stanley project, and that is the picture on the top left. So, Parents can help prepare students for school by encouraging their child to do some of the following activities independently. Buckling and unbuckling their car seat belt all on their own. This will help through driveline be quick and easy for them. Zipping their own coats and backpacks, putting on shoes and starting to tie them. Packing their own backpack with their folders and anything that they need to have for the day how to hold a pencil and use scissors, zipping and buttoning their own pants. We encourage no belts in kindergarten and young fives. Using um, tissue to wipe noses, washing hands, things like that on their own to be able to feed themselves. They may need help with um, utensils and things like that to open and close, but really try to get things so that they are independent as possible. They will learn bathroom procedures, but the basics can be taught at home. They can follow two-step directions and become an independent learner and student for our school. I'd like to talk to you now about how you can pre prepare your child academically for the school year. It's important for students to be able to recognize and write their first name, to be able to count to 10, say the alphabet, know the letters that make up their name, be able to represent numbers on their fingers, and write numbers one through 10. If students are ready, they can begin identifying sight words, naming days or months of the year, identifying upper and lowercase letters of the alphabet, as well as their corresponding sounds, naming colors, as well as the four main shapes, circle, triangle, rectangle, and square, or more if your child is ready. Some of our teachers refer to their paraprofessionals helping in their classrooms. We are so lucky to have kinder parapros in each class. They lead small groups, provide one-on-one -on -one support, assist the lead teachers, and so much more. They are all so excited to meet you. The 
please don't forget to turn in your registration paperwork to the office. We hope that you enjoyed learning all about young fives in kindergarten at Plymouth Scholars. If you have any questions, please contact Ms. Dizek or Mrs. Terenzi. We can't wait to see you in September.